So this is why people don't vlog in 2017 with Nikon cameras. But going into 2018, let's see if it will be any different because of this new addition right here, the Nikon D850. So I just picked one of these up for use because I wanted to see if it was gonna be the right camera for me to start vlogging with primarily because I have a lot of Nikon lenses. Maybe you're in the same spot and you wanna use a Nikon body for vlogging, this video is definitely for you. I'm gonna break down the pros and the cons of using the Nikon D850 for vlogging. As of my experience using it for a day, I had the Gorillapod on here. I also had my 2414, and I was doing a bunch of just run and gun stuff, a bunch of different vlogging, just walking around town. I also did some B-roll and I shot some segments with the 70 to 200, 24 to 70, 2.8 lenses as well. And I, I got a good feel for the camera, and I'm gonna tell you guys the pros and cons as far as using it specifically for vlogging. Not like all around video use where you're maybe shooting manual focus, uh, not, not photography. These things are back ordered as of this video. Everybody's wanting these things. Uh, so for photos, the D850 is, is the bomb. But for video and vlogging, is it all that? So let me get into it. Some of the pros I noticed, and I even have some of them on my phone. I just, uh, as I was going through this yesterday, and I'm gonna play some of these segments from yesterday's video so that you guys can see. So for me, um, it, one thing is that I normally vlog with the Canon SL2. That was kind of like my barrier to entry with vlogging, and it's and it's it's been an amazing camera. But I'm ready for an upgrade, so I wanted to look at this because we have some good Nikon glass. One of the reasons I want to upgrade is to get a full frame body, maybe some faster frame rates. Also, I want to get a good blurry background, and I can do that with a lot of the lenses we have for Nikon. So I was again looking at the Nikon body, and uh, so here's a couple of things I noticed right off the bat. Uh, I can just set the SL2 up anytime or my current vlogging camera anytime on the Gorillapod, no problem. I can angle it however I want, but when you use the D850, okay, that was luck. It's it's too heavy. Yesterday I would set it down and it would just topple the thing over. The weight of the camera is very heavy and that's fine. That's just one little obstacle you're going to have to go over. Another one is the autofocus and you guys are going to see this in depth. This is the main reason I was skeptical about getting the D850 to begin with because Canon has the autofocus dialed in with their dual pixel system and so I, I knew it was going to be a challenge but I didn't know how big of a challenge. I thought it was something I could overcome and you'll see that it's it's disappointing. You know, you're, you, and I was trying specifically too, after I realized how much it's hunting, I was specifically trying to give it an extra second or two to, to focus on my face before I would even start vlogging, start talking to the camera so that I ensure there's better focus. One thing, that's another con, I wouldn't be able to see if I was in focus because there's no flip out screen. But again, that's something I could deal with if I was gonna be able to use these lenses that we have for Nikon. And also some of the other benefits, some of the pros I wanted would outweigh that con of not having the flip out screen. Switching to continuous focus during video, that took me a minute to find out. It's like a button inside the autofocus where you shift from manual to autofocus. So that's on the side for you guys that might pick this up for video. The mic sounds worse off the bat. So right now I've got the video micro on here, the Rode mic on top of the Canon SL2 that I'm using to film this video with, but I actually had it on the camera yesterday and I'll show you the whole setup. But uh, when you plug the mic in straight away, it brings in too much noise. So I had to go in and manually set the volume input to 10. And you can adjust it from, I don't know, one to, let's call it 20 or 30. And I think I found 10 to be about the right number, but you know, you're gonna hear the audio in some of these clips I'm gonna play for you guys. Out in the daylight, I know it's gonna be pretty bright for 1.4, so we'll see what it actually looks like. But when you plug the Rode mic into the Canon SL2, it sounds flawless right off the bat, or it sounds better. This isn't a comparison video, but I'm letting you guys know what I'm used to. So coming from the cheap Canon SL2 body that has perfect focus, and it's also, why well, I should say, close to perfect focus, it's it's as about as good as it gets, right? Then it's also got the mic that sounds good right off the bat. Somebody who's brand new to vlogging can go ahead and grab the SL2, get a mic, and shoot vlogs confidently with that flip out screen. It makes a big difference. So the pros, why I was looking to spend, you know, $3,000 on maybe getting this body is because it shoots 120 frames a second in HD. I know that the 1DX Mark II is the only Canon right now that shoots 100 DSLR that shoots 120 frames a second and that thing's $6,000. So, you know, it's kind of, <laughs> if you want those really buttery, smooth, slow motion shots, really slow-mo, then you're gonna have to spend 6,000 if you're talking about Canon. But if you're talking about Nikon, that's half the price, right? But the autofocus, oh man, wait till you see the shot of me like pouring some Pepsi at, at Cane's. You'll see, I'll, I'll play the clip for longer than I normally would in a B-roll segment. So you'll see the autofocus is hunting, even when the, the object is a set distance away, 
even when sometimes I was in focus yesterday doing the vlogging, it just continues to hunt, even though it's got the focus locked in. And so that's a definite con, but the pro was the fact that it shoots 120 frames a second so I could get some awesome B-roll footage with this camera and have an all-in-one camera for my vlogs. So another pro was that it's a full-frame camera. You know, I am looking to make an upgrade and I'm going to. There's not a whole lot of pros to why I was going to get this camera. It was basically the fact that I was going to be able to get really slow motion shots and also have an amazing uh, camera for overall photography, just taking photos while I'm out and pair that up with the ultimate vlogging camera. But I've just come to realize that the autofocus is not, is not cut out for what I'm using it for, run and gun. I'm constantly changing the distance of me to the camera and turning the camera around and wanting it to focus quickly and it's just not effective. And uh, so, you know, I don't think this is going to be the, the best vlogging camera for 2018. I don't think this is I don't think this is the best setup. Um, just little things I noticed too is with my current camera, you turn it on and you hit record and you're good to go. With this one, I turn it on and then I have to actually hit the live view button and then hit record to start recording. Also, if I am turn it on and I hit record, I don't know if it's recording. There's no cues on the front that I've seen. Whereas my current camera has the flip out screen, so you'll see the detail. You'll know if you're recording. And yesterday, this th that's not too critical, right? You know, who cares? You'll get it down, you'll get your camera, you'll learn your camera, you'll understand, okay, you know, turn it on, live view, hit record, you're good to go. But yesterday, the first time I ever took this thing out, I actually had a, I don't know if it was an SD card issue, but maybe it's just because of the higher processing rates, but it literally went to a black screen while I was shooting video and it said video has been interrupted. And so imagine if that was like a five minute segment and I had no idea because I'm just rambling, vlogging as usual, right? Talking and then, and then I realized that that clip didn't get recorded. That's my quick review because I didn't see a video like this posted yet on vlogging specifically with the D850 and I thought it might have been that game changer because it has the 120 frames a second. I figured maybe they're perfecting their autofocus, Nikon is, and, uh, and, and that this would be a usable option for 2018. But uh, my conclusion is that I think I'm going to stick with Canon and probably pick up the 60 Mark II. That way I can go ahead and still have the flip out screen but get a full frame camera. It might even be the only full frame camera right now with that fully articulating screen because this one right here on the Nikon, it only flips up like a, like halfway. Now that's no good for you whenever you're in front of the lens trying to see yourself or compose a shot with you and something else. But anyways guys, thanks for watching. I don't think it's usable. I was going to try and just make the cuts to where you wouldn't see as much of the out of focus elements but it's really just... Uh, almost everything's out of focus. What's up guys, exciting day. We're about to go pick up the Nikon D850. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the um, way. 50, the shutter oh, speed's 50 frames a second. it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Jingle bells, jingle bells, down, 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 bells, down,